I'm in just a few seconds. Hey there, I'm Chef Dennis, and we're here today on Good Day Google Plus. And like I always say, it's a great day on Google Plus. And it's even better today because I have some wonderful guests for you. And we're going to have a wonderful show uh, for a pre New Year's Eve celebration, if you call it. It's a little too early for most of them are to be drinking, and especially for me in Florida. But uh, if you want to tip one with us today and then enter in the new year with us a little bit early, well, we'll be happy to have it. If not, you know, just put your comments or your questions in the comment bar on, you know, underneath the event, and uh, we'll get to them as soon as we can, and we'll hopefully we'll answer all your questions for you. But let me introduce my panel of guests today. We have David o So, somebody muted so, Chef. Some, yep. Somebody muted Chef. You need to unmute him. Hello. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. We got you. Okay. Great. So with David, we have David Oldenburg. And hey, Chef. How you doing, buddy? Good. Thanks so much for coming here today. It's great to and, be here. Uh, Eli Fennell. Thanks Hello. for coming. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Kelly Dixon. Hi, Kelly. It's good to see you. And Leah, Leah, how do you pronounce your last name? I don't want to butcher it. Oh, if you butcher it, it's okay, Dennis. My last name is Segety, Segety. but it's my married name, and I just would like to tell you that it took me about six months to learn to pronounce it, so if you guys butcher it, it's not so bad. Segety. All right. I was yeah, going to go with Segety, so I'm glad you, you did that, Segety. Okay. All right. So... Uh, <laughs> If you've never seen Good Day Google Plus before, you're in for a treat. Uh, we don't do a lot of things that you might see on other shows. We just have a good time. We talk to each other. We engage and uh, just see where it goes. So, you know, if you have any questions for any of our guests, again, please ask them. And any of my guests, if you have questions for each other, please, you know, go ahead and ask each other, engage, have a good time. So I'm just going to start on the one end and then hand it, turn it over to David, and we'll just work our way around. Tell us a little bit about what you do on and off of Google. Uh, hey, Chef, it's great to be here. Um, I host, host the online money show here on Google+, Plus and I've uh, been doing it for about four months and absolutely love it. It's kind of a social media, online business, business marketing type of show, and it's kind of evolving, and uh, we have a lot of big plans for 2014. Now, the way I make my money, because um, there's a lot of people here, <laughs> a lot of people on Google+, Plus that I talk to, and they're doing all kinds of cool stuff, but a lot, not a lot of people are monetizing. And so the way I make my money Monday through Friday is for the last 23 years, I've been in the mortgage industry. I own a real estate company and I own a mortgage company and I've been doing that for 23 years. Very good. And are you learning, giving us some ways how to make money using Google Plus now or is that what you're talking about? You know, I don't, I unfortunately get to see your show except on replays because it airs the same time as mine does. So, um. uh, Well, you know, um, Obviously, yeah, we, we do a lot of social media talk, um, and a lot of my guests, I think, are kind of, you know, in that social media expert type of, type of world, but um, I'm actually launching, Chef, a second show probably in about two weeks, and uh, this show is going to be strictly uh, real estate, mortgage, and business, but I'm still going to continue hosting the online money show, so I'm going to be actually running two live shows uh, every week starting in about eight days. Great. We'll look forward to that. Yeah, me too. I'm excited. All right, let's turn it over to Eli now. Eli, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Eli, uh, Eli Fennell. I, uh, I'm an IT guy uh, by profession. Um, I'm a psych major by education uh, because machines have a mind of their own too. Uh, <laughs> I'm the guy, one of those guys who came to Google Plus and left all of his Facebook friends behind and said, see ya, I'm hanging out with the cool kids on Google Plus. And I just did that for a couple of years and then started helping small businesses with their social media and SEO strategy because of all I had learned here. Uh, I'm actually working with a local chiropractor to uh, start a series of shows about, uh, about your health uh, using Hangouts on Air soon. Um, it's really great to be here and uh, yeah, that pretty much sums me up. Have, have you found that working with your local do you go to the Chamber of Commerce at all? Is that how you do it? Or you just have you reached out or people reached out to you in the local area? Because more and more I keep hearing that. And I think that's an opportunity that all of us need to really jump on uh, is working with some local people. Yeah, they have been reaching out to me. And I absolutely think that at local there is a, a, a gold mine and a job boom waiting to happen in local social media and SEO. There, I see so many 
businesses. They have no social media presence. Their SEO is laughable, uh, and they just they don't know what to do. It's not their fault. Uh, they either don't have the money to pay somebody, uh, or, or because they think, oh, it's too expensive, or they did pay somebody and that somebody took advantage of them. So I think that people who uh, can really help those businesses out and work within their price range and explain to them why the initial investment is worth it uh, are going to have a lot of opportunities in the future. Absolutely. I know I've seen some people that have gotten taken in by others trying to lead them and show them how they're supposed to use Google Plus and it just really just hurt them a lot, uh, set them back, gave them a bad taste in their mouth for Google Plus and just because they're, they're hiring people that don't know the business, that's all. So it's good to know. All right, let's move on to Kelly. Kelly, thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, thanks for having me. I love I, that we're in your kitchen here too. It looks great. I know. This is my little computer setup right here. It, I'm a mom, so this having it right in the hub of everything kind of allows me to do my blogging and my work while being with the kids. <laughs> So welcome to my kitchen, Chef. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I love that. Um, I am the writer, the author, the blogger of Smart Schoolhouse, which is a blog mostly about crafts, uh, DIY activities, and kids' activities. But every once in a while, it's sprinkled with cute recipes and sweet treats. Um, aside from that, I'm, uh, like I said, a mom. I've got two toddlers, ages two and three. I was a teacher, a first grade teacher, but now I stay home with them. And my blog kind of started as a hobby. I did not plan on making money with it at all, but it has transformed my life. Once I started it, it kind of took off. There's something lucky about Smart Schoolhouse, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, and I think my presence on Google Plus is it kind of just shows that, and I it's. I use Google Plus to share my own posts, but not simply my own posts, to communicate with other bloggers and to make, um, to network with other bloggers like you, Chef. I would have never, probably, had it not been for Google Plus, we would have never met. And yeah. so. That's the wonderful thing about Google Plus. I can say that about so many people. I mean, I think everyone on the panel here, I would have never met. And, uh, <laughs> it, it's such an amazing tool. Yeah, so the networking here has been really powerful. And now I do monetize a lot that I do. So I use Google Plus to kind of catapult the way I do everything else. And um, you know, even Instagram and YouTube, having them all together and being able to send everything out on Google Plus has been a game changer for my blog. It really has. Good. I'm glad to hear that. So you'll you'll be another evangelist for Google then. I always say I'm out there preaching the gospel of Google every chance I get. So uh. hey, hey, Chef, I want to ask Kelly. Um, how you say you're monetizing? How exactly are you monetizing your blog? Well, my favorite way of getting money is uh, passive income, and for me, the passive income because that could you could define that in different ways, but passive income for me are the ads on my blog. That's just the easiest money for me, and then I, I find it to be motivating, and I check all the time, how much am I making right now? <laughs> but, you know, but then there's also YouTube, and I do monetize different things on YouTube, and I also work very closely with brands. I, I didn't bring that up before. I um, share a message, or I share my story with a brand under a contract, and uh, monetize my posts that way. I get paid to do that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that is a good tool for bloggers, and you know, they there are some good opportunities for them out there with brands. And that's one thing we need to do is bring more brands onto Google Plus. So many of them are are not ready. Uh, they don't have the resources. IT places, not IT places, uh, PR places that are running them, you know, just don't are stretched so thin they can't jump on the Google Plus bandwagon. But we need to start reaching these brands and, and show them how important you know, Google Plus is going to be for their future. So. It's good to know. All right, Leah, and I'm so happy that you joined us today, that you're able to be with us. And uh, 
Thank you, Dennis. Dennis, you were talking about how brands are getting into Google Plus, and this is about a third of what I do. A bunch of my clients right now are actually looking at Google Plus and considering it very seriously. And I'm kind of like a guinea pig. I have to, I have to put myself out there and say I'm, 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 I'm a guinea pig right now, trying to figure it out as much as I can so that I can give them some more direction. Because about a third of what I do is I consult with um, national brands that are into health and wellness and lifestyle type of themes. A third of what I do is I have a community full of moms that are into disease prevention and weight loss. And the other third of what I do is activism that has to do with health and food. And so if you hear about labeling GMOs and those kind of things, those are the kind of things that I am involved in in the background organizing bloggers. Um, right now, just for me, something a little exciting, and I know because you guys are talking about monetizing, I own a network of just over 9,000 500 bloggers. We've been growing it for years. And um, um, these are the lifestyle bloggers, there's food bloggers, there's um, healthy bloggers, there's parenting bloggers. And I, I match um, large brands with these bloggers. And so we put together, you know, um, sponsored blogger activation. So, right, one that we just finished that's food related, so I thought that you'd be interested in hearing about it, was we worked with a company called Swerve Sweetener. And they're a sweetener that is completely natural and GMO free. And we put together um, 10 bloggers, and these 10 bloggers did posts and used the product for about a month, post tweeted, Facebooked, even used Google Plus. And um, I put those kind of um, activations together in the background. And so that's about a third of what I do is I do that kind of consulting with my network. And the other third of what I do is community and then, you know, just being a pain in the butt for the food supply and talking about healthy <laughs> issues. And I am just so happy to, to be here at Google Plus because I'm new, but I'm studying you guys all like a bug. And I'm so excited because, again, <laughs> Kelly was saying, and Dennis was saying, I never would have met you guys. I mean, I'm surrounded by moms all day long, you know, which is fine, and I love it. But, you know, I think Google Plus is great because it's a, it's a new feel. And to me, it feels a lot of like what Twitter was five years ago. It's got that really helpful, let's get together and do something awesome. Let's, let's give of ourselves instead of taking, you know, and I love that feel that you guys have here. And that's one of the things that I'm just, I'm just excited about. So well, I, I can see it. You're, you're really excited. I'm glad to see it. And, you know, and you have the perfect attitude for Google Plus because that's what it's about. It's giving. And the ones, there's too many that are unfortunately haven't understood that yet. And they mm -hmm. come on and they just think it's there for them as their platform. But there's so much more. Absolutely. You know, uh, Leah, it, it's so awesome to hear that because I find that the people that are making money on Google and the people that are successful are people just like yourself and also Kelly, people that are doing things for other people, promoting other people. And uh, when you do that, I've said this many times, it comes back tenfold. And so it's awesome to see what everybody's doing. Oh, absolutely. And you know, it's true with money too. I've noticed that if you give money away and you don't have anything attached to it, it actually comes back. And sometimes it doesn't come back quite the way you think it's going to come back, but it comes back. I think that's just true of the world. But I love how Google capitalizes on it. It's just, again, it's just such an awesome, happy, let's get together and just do cool things type of feeling here. So, Excellent. I love that. I love it. You're, we're we're going to definitely have to talk some more because you're, you're going to love Google Plus even more <laughs> once you really get into the Hangouts and stuff. So. All right. Well, you know, we, we have a couple comments here today. I'm going to throw up real quick. Uh, Jenny Field stopped by, and she wants to say hi to everyone. She's going to be catching it in reruns, but she wanted to make sure she stopped and said hi. Hi, Jenny. Thank you so much for stopping by today. And Annabelle is in the house. David Oldenburg, it's great to see you on the panel. Awesome. Thank Annabelle you. Annabelle was on with us last week. And here's a comment from Marilyn Morin. Every client that I work with gets a presence on Google+. Plus. Depending on their budget, they get a few hours of Google+, Plus management, and community outreach every month. And, you know, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the way to do it. You just got to start them. Uh, Jason Weiser is in the house. Jason, lots of discussion still happening that G+, Plus does not have a significant ROI for local brick and mortars. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, he's asking for thoughts from the panel. Any thoughts on this? You know, I'll comment on this. Um, you know, one of the things that I do, and I think I kind of use Google Plus as a, a tool to uh, grow my referral partners. So what I do, and I've talked about this in other shows, I go out to other social medias, and it's pretty easy to find people that are influential on other social medias 
that have absolutely no presence on Google+. And what I do is I go to them and I reach out to them and I say, hey, how would you like to be influential on Google+, and let me show you how to do it. Well, what that translates to is a lot of these people have brick and mortar businesses. And what people with brick and mortar businesses are always looking for is a way to drive more people to their, their local site. So they think social media is not good for them because they think, well, it's global. But the reality is social media is becoming more and more local. And if you look at things like uh, the, Google, the Google local pages, and, and for one thing, um, and I'm trying to think of a way to tie this all in, but one of the things I'll always tell people is that if you get on Google Plus and you develop followers and you develop influence, as we all know, you are influencing their search. And if you are local and local people are following you and then they're looking for your products, and like for example, you know, Chef, if, if you owned a restaurant or something and you want to get people to go there local and maybe one day they're typing, you know, I'd like to go to a great steak place and you're going to pop up because the simple fact is they're following you and that happens to be your expertise and uh, so Jason the thing I would say and I obviously it would be great to hear everybody else's opinion but I think there's a lot of ways that you can use Google Plus to market the brick and mortar business and then talking about the local influence like you just did too people that are not using Google local and not leaving comments or reviews for businesses that are on there are like you said missing an opportunity because not only is that business going to come up in search but you're going to come up in search with it too with your comments so uh, you know people start and, and, and if it's in like if I just did restaurants it also just helps solidify my presence as an expert in the food field so I mean but you, you can go all over the place and your name's just going to pop up more and more and again it's that whole thing where the more it pops up the more it's going to pop up so uh, brick and mortar businesses I think are just as important and need to get that local aspect of it running and that's one of the few instances where I say yes have a brand page because if you're actually using it at a brick and mortar business or you're even an e-commerce business uh, where you're gonna have money coming in and people going to a website for that you definitely need a brand page you know I always say if you're a blogger you know I, I'm not saying a blogger being a blogger is in a business but it's a different kind of business it's a people totally to people business mm -hmm. so that's where your personal page comes in better. So great question, Jason. Thank you. Anybody else want to chime in on that or? Um, yeah, uh, I, I have to think that you know that it's it. You have to have a pretty myopic view to not see the ROI of something that's tied into search, particularly something that's tied into Google search, which has what 91, 92 percent of the mobile search market, something like that. It's used. Mobile's on huge. Yeah. yeah, it's used on iPhones and it's used on Androids, uh, so it, it's huge. And people are, you know, starting to take their devices and just go, you know, what's nearby. So you need to have that optimized. Interesting. This is anecdotal, but I was looking for Tiger Direct, my my local store, the other day. Now Tiger Direct, the brand, they've got, uh, you know, a Google uh, business page set up that pops up in the knowledge panel there. They didn't have Google Plus pages for each of the locations. Uh, and I just thought, wow, missed opportunity there. I mean, you could provide so much specific information that the person is looking for. And, uh, and here's a little, little secret. They give you this little thing called recent posts when you set up your business that way. You can use that space like a free advertising space when somebody searches for you. Excellent point. I also think there's something about being one of the first ones in the space. You know, and Google Plus is, you know, it's not a, a newbie platform, but, you know, it's kind of like the newbie platform that has a lot of oomph to it because it is the Google platform, right? You know, and so I think another thing is if brands are um, not looking at tomorrow, but they're looking at the five-year plan and they're looking at capitalizing in five years, they really would need to take this seriously because you want to get in early, you want to create influence, you want to you know, engage a network, you want to make friends, and you want people to know who you are. And I remember the people on Twitter five years ago that started off, I mean, geez, today it's just, you know, you. everyone says, why didn't I do that five years ago? You know what I'm saying? Why didn't I do that five years ago? And I feel like, you know, 
jumping on, and not jumping on the bandwagon, but, you know, getting onto Google and taking it very seriously right now is probably, people are going to be saying about you in a couple of years, why didn't I think about that years ago? You know what I'm saying? I just think that this is an opportunity you can't pass by. Well, that was the one reason that I really got on Google Plus when it opened up. It's because when I started as a blogger and I'm looking around and everybody else has tons of followers on Facebook and on Twitter and, I, and I'm looking at my 12 followers or... <laughs> 15 followers and thinking, oh my God, what can I do? <laughs> and I said, you know, Google Plus, it's a, I'm start, finally starting on a level playing field and it's all up to me and either if it, if it doesn't work, I haven't wasted anything. So, you know, that was my philosophy when it started. And once I started on it, it was like, oh, this is so much fun. This is, I can interact, I can engage, you know, because I never quite got Twitter. You know, I just mm. didn't understand it. And Facebook, as hard as I try, it never felt social to me. I, I feel the same way. I, I'm not a big, I'm on Facebook, but primarily just for friends and family. Not a big, not a big fan of uh, Facebook. But, you know, with Google, uh, Google Plus, it's really no different what you do on here that, than what you do in, I think back, you know, 23 years ago when I got into the real estate and mortgage industry, there was no real internet. There was, uh, nobody was using a cell phone. And uh, the way we communicated was we built referral, local referral partners by just picking up the phone and going to people's uh, to their local businesses. You can do that same thing here on Google Plus, but you can use this tool to get an in to meet people, and that's what's so powerful. Is that I can look up and let's say there's somebody influential and they live right down the street from me, and I want to meet that person through Google Plus. I can contact them or through social media. I can make an appointment. And now it's kind of like we talk a little bit, we kind of break the ice so that when we do sit down and meet, um, it's like we already know each other. We already have that connection. And, and I can say to them, and I do this all the time, I can say, are you on Google Plus? Well, I already know the answer to that question. I already know they're not here or they're not very popular. So when I ask them that question, they'll say, well, no, I'm not over there. And I'll say, let me show you how to advance your business and build your influence. At that point, I've got them. They're a referral partner. They're a raving fan, and they're going to help me with my business. Absolutely. One way to approach it. Let me uh, recognize a few other people out here, too, while we're on that. Alexandra. Alex, you're in the house. Eli Fennell forgot to mention that he is a cat person. What the <laughs> what? I love cats. <laughs> <laughs> We got something good coming, Eli. On that and awesome. the whole thing. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm a cat person, which is why I don't have to come home at night if I don't want to. <laughs> there you go. Unlike dog people. <laughs> yep. We we have to restrict our trips to like seven hours at the most for our for our for baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, Melanie Hall is here. You totally agree with Eli Fennell. Local businesses are waiting for social media help. And you know, some of them may not know it, but they definitely are waiting for it. So. Peg Fitzpatrick is in the house. Thank you so much. Waving hi, Chef Dennis, listening to my Pinterest Plus buddy, Kelly Dixon. Thanks yeah. for stopping. Hi, Peg. I love Peg. Me too. She is so good. Okay. Or Letha Smith. Hey, guys, can't wait to see what Leah, as a fellow mom blogger, real foodie, does as a newbie. Well, I'm telling you right now, or Letha, she is going to skyrocket because she's got the right attitude. Dennis, you're awesome sauce, and so is all you guys, all, all the people here in the panel. <laughs> Thank you. So are you. Can I say the word badass? Is that okay? Yeah, you can say I that. I said it. Yeah. Am yeah. I allowed to? <laughs> 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 I'm being so good right now. On my show, sometimes the four-letter words fly, and I've been so good, and I've tucked it inside. I've been so good. <laughs> sometimes I just can't help myself. <laughs> well, if we let you say Facebook, we'll almost let you say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook is the new F word. Okay. Yes. That was, that was one of Mia's. Okay, and Nazim is in. would love to get some feedback from the panel on Google Helpouts. <laughs> Anyone is using Helpouts or has any thoughts on Helpouts? Is anybody uh, using them? I'm not no. using them. Okay. Uh, um, what are they, Dennis? Tell me. Well, Helpouts, and I'll explain it a little, and I know something about them. I haven't started using them yet, but when I got started on Google+, one of the things that really drove me as a presence here was that I was on a, on a company called ChefHangout.com. And uh, Joe Saad developed this, this 
technology or, or this uh, business opportunity, and he was really ahead of the game on this. And we did uh, we did paid cooking lessons in your own home with Google Hangouts, and Google loved us because we were the only ones using Hangouts at the time. And I, you'd have up to ten, you know, nine people in your class with you, and there were times I had people from Japan to the Canary Islands in the same class, and it was just mind-boggling that we could do this. But it never really quite caught on, and Joe had planned to expand it into different areas, you know, of other expertise, and just make it one big Hangout Planet was the name of his company. Uh, and Google is taken that idea, they may have had it at the same time too, and they've expanded it and they've turned it into Google Helpouts, which as an expert, once they approach you, or once it opens up, I don't know if it's out of beta yet and they're still done testing it, but they approach you as considered an expert in your field if you would like to teach something or share something, and it can be for free or you can charge however you want to do it. So that's what the help outs are and I don't know a whole lot about them yet. I haven't really talked to anyone who's done anything more than a free one here or there, you know, just to try to feel their way around and, and get the uh, groundwork, but it's coming. You know, and I always thought that we were really going to explode at Chef Hangout because the idea was just phenomenal, and everybody that took the classes loved that experience of one-on-one -on -one with you in their kitchen. And it was wild. They'd hold up a pan. How's this look? Is that enough, you know, liquid? Do I need some more in it? You know, what are you using? And they'd watch you do it, and, and it was really a great way to get stuff across. So if helpouts can transcend to that, I think once people start using them and trying them, I think they're really going to be big. And again, it's another part of Google. So, yeah, Dennis, asking. you know what I found that when you're the first at something, you spend 50% of your time educating people about what you are, what you do, what, why the heck it's important. Right, and so those type Absolutely. of things do have a slow start off, but once they grow, they grow. Yeah. You know, well, you only I mean think about Kleenex. You know, if you look at the, I think the cool thing about these help outs eventually is going to be the SEO. If you look at, um, if you look at what Google has done with the Hangouts, um, it, it's it fascinates me with the Hangouts. Sometimes I'll do a show, and it, it might, and I'll I'll uh, keyword that show based on the title and the uh, uh, the hashtags afterward on YouTube. And it's amazing how many of my shows show up, you know, literally uh, in, in, on first page search on YouTube for keyword for the first two or three weeks after the show. Um, I think Google is pushing these help outs as experts, like kind of like the how-to videos on YouTube. I think if you are picked as an expert, I think if you are doing these, they're going to be huge SEO, which means Google is going to put them to the top. If somebody goes into YouTube and they type, you know, how-to this, I think if you're in that uh, group, your videos are going to be coming up in the top. So it definitely it's worth uh, looking at if you have an expertise in something. I, I think so. And, and again, now is the time to do it. So if you're thinking about it and you're out there and you have something and you have been invited, again, I, I don't know that much about them and how the invitations are going out, but I would definitely jump on it. I, I keep t kicking myself for not having done it yet. But actually, I want to take it in another direction. I don't want to really want to do cooking ones anymore. Uh, I want to do social media ones. So, uh, you know, I, maybe that's why I haven't done it yet. I'm a little afraid. <laughs> <laughs> We have uh, another comment here from Peg. She says, I need to work on Twitter next. I know I do. It's great with G+, Pinterest, and blogging, and, and I have not been very faithful to Pinterest either since Google Plus has just monopolized my time, but uh, mm -hmm. I try to do that more on my phone. And Mia Voss is in the house. Mia, woohoo! All my favorites in one spot. Hello, <laughs> Chef Dennis David Oldenburg. Thank you, Mia. And I want to remind you, too, that Mia was the creator of Facebook is the new F word. So let's give <laughs> credit to the genius <laughs> behind <you're> that. <laughs> All right. Well, and that we, chick. She, she, like, Mia is the queen of bat crap crazy. Oh, I'm gonna like her. You will love her. You will absolutely love her. You have to be. I I love you. people. The more eccentric you are, the happier I am to be around you. I mean, that's just ugh. give me people that are just off the wall, odd. I don't know. I don't know what it is about. I think it's because they're not boring. You're constantly <laughs> She's learning not something. Boring. You're constantly <laughs> She's learning not something boring. from them. Definitely not boring. <laughs> Mia, we have to be friends. We have to be friends. Absolutely. You two will will click so, so strongly, I'm telling you. And Holly Homer is in the house, too. Not a Catterday, people. Uh, 
Now, Holly, I have to say, I, I'm, not, I'm not a cat person, and not because I don't like cats, but I'm really allergic to them, and my eyes close, and it gets hard to breathe, and things like that. But <laughs> I always tell my, my, my blogging friends and stuff, you know, expand your network. Get out there. Meet new people. And one of the best ways is says, join Catter Day, because I did that. <laughs> And one of the most viral posts I ever had was of a cat licking a multicolored snow cone. <laughs> it got like 10,000 likes. It was just ridiculous, you know, so uh, made a lot was of Was it really friends. hyper afterwards? <laughs> well, I didn't actually see the cat. I just found the picture, and I was trying oh, to find okay. a cat I picture. thought it was a gif. I'd say, after, like, licking that, and then it would be super hyper afterwards because of the artificial dyes. That's hysterical, oh. and then they'd be bouncing up and down. And yeah, I okay. love cats, but I, had, I lost my cat because my husband is just like you, Dennis. He's severely allergic and he can't oh. breathe, but he's been getting those shots and he's gone from being able to stay on a cat for an hour to maybe four hours, but we don't have one. But I used to have a black cat that would roll over and play dead. It was so awesome and, and she would fetch too. I mean, I, I was able to train my cats when I had them to do really cool things. I still love cats. Sorry. That's pretty, yeah, they're they're good. They're hey, for anybody, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go for ahead. anybody who who needs a little antidote from Catterday from time to time, check out the site Average Cats. Trust Average me. Cats. Yes. I'm down. I'm joining Catterday. That's Saturday, right? Yes. Every Saturday, Catterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my I'm little cat you. fix. It doesn't seem to be quite as big as it used to. Uh, for a while there, it was just like taking over the stream, and I saw something that kind of scares me, and I don't want to get involved in it, and that's Goater Day or something. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Chef! It's so funny you say that. Uh, uh, about two, about two what? months ago, a month ago, somebody came to me and said, "Dave, will you do us a huge favor? Will you promote Goater Day uh, in 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 one of your posts or something?" So I said, "All right." So I wrote this post. I have to tell you, I could not believe how much traction that post got. All I did was post. A picture of a goat on my on my page, and then it got forwarded to the Goater Day community. So they all came in, and they're like, "Oh, thank you so much for promoting Goater Day." And I thought, "Oh my gosh, I I think I had more activity in that one post than I've ever had." And I'm not even a goat guy. I mean, it's just it's that's just good crazy. to know, David. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in their, their defense, if you feel sheepish about posting a goat, don't feel bad about it, all right? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Hey, it isn't pun day either. Uh, <laughs> but but anyway, yeah, no, so there's there's a little something for everyone here. And, and in the beginning, I don't know if you have, there were <laughs> there were a lot of bronies following me, and I don't know if you've, if you've ever had that experience. Bronies. Bronies, Bronies. yes. Guys that like My Little Pony. Oh. There's men that like yeah. My Little Pony? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I have a friend who has a comic book store, uh, Kida from Past the Sushi, and she says they come in there and they buy the uh, the new issues of them, and they like are embarrassed, and she always says, oh, here's your My Little Pony. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm embarrassed I had to, for them. Hopefully, we, hopefully this pops up here. I wanted to call up... Uh, Shannon the, uh, Hernandez. Is yeah, here. Shannon Hernandez. And the reason I'm bringing him up, Chef, is we were talking uh, before the show about what a Metallica rocker you are. <laughs> and uh, I'm a rocker, you're a rocker, hey, we're all rockers, and uh, Shannon is definitely a rocker. Shannon totally is a cool. rocker, he is, yeah, he that's is. for sure. Yeah, here's uh, Peg saying she's connecting with people on Catterday, too. They're nice people. Yes, they are. Cat people can be nice people. Yes. Can be. There's yes. another side to them, too. Don't well, yeah, yeah. They can be oh, weird, too. We will go there. Mia Voss has just said, ha, 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 Leah, you are my new BFF girl crush. Oh, girl crush. Oh. Hashtag girl crush. <laughs> Love it. And speaking of hashtags, who did ask me for my hashtag? Um, That's Jason. Jason Weiser, Jason. I think. Jason, it's it's a hashtag Good Day uh, Google or Good Day G Plus or Good Day Google Plus. I can't remember because unfortunately I don't use it often enough, so I need to do that. But I think it's in the bottom of the uh, the event. But thank you for asking. Oh, so we're having a good time. Here we go. I <laughs> hear <laughs> Jason says he's not a goat guy. <laughs> <laughs> that could be your oh, new, man. That should be on your online oh. money show. I'm not even a goat guy. Oh, I mean, I think I think I I think I said something I shouldn't have said. <laughs> yeah, I guess the goat's out of the bag, huh? 
<laughs> Take it, Oldenburg's not a Scottish name. <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a German name. Yeah, there's no haggis for you today. Okay. Oh, haggis man. Haggis is good, man. <laughs> haggis is good? Haggis is good. I spent some time living in England. I liked haggis. But I have a little bit of Irish and Scottish in me, too. So. Okay. Me, too. You rock. Ah! <laughs> Oh, I, I have to Wait, say... Wait, we're going to count all the things that we have in common, all of us. And we would yep. never have known each other had not there not been Google+. Plus. Nope. Goats, haggis, who knows? Cats. Cats, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> goater Day. Mm -hmm. All right, so anyway, there's I a lot think, of... Though, I think my community would like Goater Day. Is it, am I saying this right, Goater Day? Because yes. some of them own their own goats, and they do homesteading as well. So they have chickens and goats and... That's a big part of my audience. You guys laugh. That if I bet you, if I post something about Goater Day, that would be interesting. <laughs> you know, you'll get, get and you'll get traction. <laughs> get Goater Day I, trending. I can't have a goat. We have chickens, but I can't have a goat because you know we like live in Simi, which is technically like still Los Angeles, right, Kelly? Can you imagine having a goat? Uh, our the neighbors city? have a goat. We have a goat. Oh, do they do? Yeah, we really. How do. big's the property? Um, I think there are a couple acres. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, but if you still lived in South Orange County, right, oh, where no. your backyard no. is like this big and it's right up against everybody else's, no, no rooster, no. no in goat. fact, when we lived there, we had our little artificial turf yard, and it stayed perfect. It was not really great for goats. <laughs> but now we've got the chicken coop, and life has really changed. <laughs> oh, you're awesome. You get a chicken coop too. See, me and Kelly have chickens. That's what we have together. Well. I don't have the chickens yet because I'm really nervous about it, and I've got two little kids and two dogs, and everybody says they're really easy to take care of, but well, I'm still really nervous about it. And we, we're opened, we're open, so we don't have fences around anything. And there's uh, coyotes. There was one out here just this morning, and a bobcat, and you know, so I'm a little bit nervous. But everybody says, "Oh my God, you gotta get chickens." Chickens are awesome. Eggs. Fresh, like hours old, are amazing balls. I gotta tell you, right, Chef Dennis? Absolutely. Freshly Nothing brewed like eggs, fresh. right from the chicken? Absolutely. I mean, Nothing better. I, growing up, we had uh, chicken farms all around us. When after we moved to Texas, we were in the in the woodies of New Jersey, and uh, there were I, I can't remember anything better than fresh eggs. Even the ones you get now, if, you know, from farmers markets, they're good, but they're just not quite. You know, as fresh. But anytime you can get the white to hold together, it's a wonderful thing. It doesn't run all over the place. So, uh, but as for goats, you know, that that's an interesting concept. Uh, you know, Chef Dennis, um, this this may sound a little odd, but I'm hoping that my girlfriend Sherry is not watching this because when I get excited, she says I sound like a goat. <laughs> and I go, <laughs> that could be. She's gonna watch this. Good. She's gonna be. She's gonna be teasing me. And I, I promise you, nobody watches the show really, and YouTube channel hardly gets any action at all. So, but but let me tell you, if I can sing on Mia's show, you know, you can you can sound a little like a goat. That's okay. Well, if I get no excited, shit. let me know if the goat comes out. Okay. I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking at this comment here from Shannon, and, I, and you know, Chef, I, I didn't get a chance to actually uh, hear you sing last week, and you know, I'm thinking, how many people want to hear Chef sing again? Wow, that would be awesome. You know, um, he's shaking his head like, oh dear well, God. We'll have to, I'll have <laughs> sing, to come up sing, with sing, sing, sing. <laughs> oh, you know, I don't. I actually wrote words for that, and I, I don't have them with me, so I'll have to. And the cowboy hat's put away. Well, I need the. I need the cowboy hat. What for about a, a? What What about a Christmas Carol? A Christmas Carol. That would be worse. I, I'm better off with some <laughs> fat crap crazy. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a quick a quick one verse. I don't oh. know where she come from, but I know where she goes, cause she's bat crap crazy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, who knew? Uh, that's great. Yeah, that would be my new saint, my new career on Google Plus. I, I think I might have to do what what James Dearsley is saying here and start beekeeping. There you go. Oh. And you know, I, I I feel so bad about beekeeping too because I went to a seminar last summer and I didn't realize how how 
bad the shape of bees was in this world. And, and if we lose the bees, we're screwed. <laughs> yeah. It's at, I think it's at 40% or 42%. You guys have to it's, – it's really, really, really low. I mean, they are dying. And it's, it's atrocity. Europe is doing a lot of things right now to try to curtail that. And so they're making certain pesticides illegal. We're working on that in the United States, but it's, you know, it, it, it's complicated. I mean, the government has to get involved to, to, to help that problem out. Yeah, just to get a little serious there, you know, I, I, yeah. that bringing that up made me think, and I'm going, oh, Lord, if we lose the bees, <laughs> there's going to be much on this earth left. But uh, Right, right. <sighs> Well, let's get on serious. We're having too much fun. <laughs> Mick Sharp, it's a madhouse today. It's almost like being on the Mia show, isn't it? I love it. My, my girl's rubbing off on me. Thank you. All right, so what else are we going to talk about, guys? You got any subjects near and dear to your heart that uh, you'd like to bring up? <coughs> I think it'd be awesome, Chef, to talk about uh, what everybody – uh, sees happening on Google Plus and what they're going to do for 2014. Excellent idea. Thank you. So would you like to start it since you brought it back? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Okay. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, gosh, we, we did this on, I did a show on Friday mm -hmm. and I had, it, it, was, it was crazy. I did nine guests and, and myself. So there was 10 of us in this show trying to keep it organized. And we did this thing where we said, you know, what would we like to see changed for Google Plus? And I'd, it'd kind of be cool to get the opinion. We have kind of a, a lot of different okay. people here today. And, uh, you know, I brought up a couple things. I kind of started off. One of the things that I thought would be awesome would be, uh, and I'm Chef, I know because you have a big audience. You probably, this is probably a big problem for you. It's like you see that somebody mentions you in a comment. And it comes up in your notification. But then it, when you click on it, it doesn't take you to where that comment is. No. And so... You know, sometimes I'll get people in a shared circle or a, a, a big post, and I'll, I'll say, they'll say, you know, David Oldenburg was mentioned. I'll click on it, and I'll see, you know, there's 350 comments. Yeah. And I've got to try to sift through that 350 comments to find where somebody mentioned me. Yeah. And for people that have a, you know, a big audience, um, I can imagine it's all, all but impossible to keep up. So that's what I would love to see changed. It would be great to hear what other people would love to see change. That, that is a great idea. And the other thing now is uh, the notifications. They just need to be – they work – need to work on notifications a little bit, where, especially where you're mentioned, because I still don't get – if I'm mentioned, I still don't get it. If I'm not mentioned, forget it. I, I don't ever see it. You know, I have right. so many notifications, unless I just happen to come across it accidentally. If so, even someone sends me a, a message, sometimes I don't see it because they don't put my name in the message, and it just – it just well, gets lost. You know, Chef, it's like when I went to contact you this morning before the show, I've started using the Hangouts because it, it pops up on their screen and they get yes. that instant notification if they're on. It's so much easier, especially people that have a lot of influence or a lot of followers. I mean, if you're trying to reach somebody like Chef or, you know, Christine DeGraff or, you know, somebody like that, it's extremely difficult because it may be a long time before they see your notification. But if you just click on Hangouts and just basically you know, ha hang out them, um, uh, even if you don't do the video end of it, just text only, uh, it pops up on their screen right in front of them, and so no matter what they're doing, uh, they know you're trying to communicate with them. Yep, and, th and that is a great idea, too, is just to make sure, just to hit them in the chat, because it is really good for so many other things other than just the hangout. And mm -hmm. then it's, it's there, and, and if you mention something later, you know, it's easy to find, easy to go back to, so that's a good idea. So, Eli, what do you think, uh, what are you looking for for 2014? Well, I'm, I'm, well, I'm looking for a much bigger push at, at small businesses, uh, you know, to, to because I feel like they've been a little inconsistent in that, you know. They tell them to get the page, but then they mess around with the local search results with Hummingbird and things like that, and it all goes wiggy. Uh, what I really think they need to do is, is just take this Hangouts thing to the next level because it's on the verge of being so awesomely powerful even for the mainstream but uh, it could be a little little tr overly tricky at times uh, Eli know. that's the problem too I think I agree with you like if something is going to succeed it has to be successful to the lowest common denominator which is yes. the newbie coming in like Absolutely. me coming in and being like oh I can do this and I think I mean at least my community that I have is that and they're, they're in 
and Facebook and Twitter. Sorry, guys, that was the F word. But <laughs> I kept asking them, you know, over the week, I'm like, what do you guys think about Google Plus? What do you guys think about Google Plus? And one of the things that they said, it was just really intimidating and confusing. And that was the reason why they didn't come over here. And so I think if they worked on that, we would see a lot more people. Oh, yeah. Especially moms, mom bloggers, you know. Mm. Lots of mom bloggers um, in the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, for some reason, a lot of people have this fear of using their real name. And I think, sorry not to cut you off, Eli, but piggybacking off that. Poor some Eli. I think the women just took more like, like, enough. Okay, now I'm going <laughs> to. Well, I think some moms are afraid to use their real names. Maybe not just moms altogether, but you kind of get spam. We'll call it. We kind of like we all know what that is. And as a woman, you kind of go, Ooh, "What is that?" And so I think maybe a better way to filter that because that scares people away. But you know, there's there's no harm in using your name. If someone wants to find you, they can find you, and it's not going to be the Google Plus isn't going to be the reason why. You know, but I think the spam too is. They're they're working on that. They, they are. are. They, and I feel like they've yeah. done a great job, but still, it I, I know. scares people away. It doesn't scare me. Kelly, I I'm not getting as much spam hard. as you are. It, well, it'll it comes and goes, and and I think they're getting it? rid of them. But you know, there was a lot of of um, men. That you'll you'll never see, you know. Like I always say, they're not gonna ride their camel up and knock on your door. <laughs> but <laughs> hate to, to pigeonhole anybody, but you know, uh, block them. Yeah, that's all. You block them and report them. I mean, I actually had to just do that. I even even I get get, get those stalkers, believe it or not. And, uh, <laughs> I you just mean the hey baby messages, Kelly? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, some of this yeah. stuff it is so and, weird. And I feel mean, free to like... call them out publicly, so we can <laughs> oh, all. Oh, um, is that okay? And block them. Yes, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. When someone comments to you like, "Hey baby, want to do nasty stuff to your yeah, lady right, part?" Right. Then yes, that is okay to make public, as far as I'm. Wait a minute. No, is that no, you? Really you. <laughs> 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 And uh, and I'm okay with it. If uh, any woman out there, if you want to stalk me, go ahead. Um, you know, I, no, I used I, to think that too, but I'm going to tell you no. You know, there's a there's a great chef. There's a great comment here by uh by by Kim. I'm looking at it here, and uh, let me highlight so I can actually see it too. But uh, this comment here, uh, and it was on and chef. I know I know you and I know this. Uh, when these com notifications disappear once you click on them, where do they go? Is there any way to get them back to continue acknowledging comments? Etc. And you know, actually, uh, it, that's pretty easy to do. Actually, after you click on something and you check on it, it actually goes down to the section in the notifications called "Previously Read." And if you if you if you're trying to write a notif respond to something and it disappears, just go back on notifications to "Previously Read" and look for it and find it. You can call it back up, and then you can uh, recomment to that person or kind of continue where you left off. Great okay, question. The one thing I don't like is when you click on the notifications and you're reading them and you go to answer one and then you lose mm -hmm. the whole stream of notifications. When they come right. back, they're all unhighlighted. Yes. So sometimes you'll lose and I'll go, you know, I'll have to call up previously read just to see if I missed something. And then now there's another one that says others. And sometimes there's actual comments and all others or whatever they call it. That's under underneath mine. Like I, I only get to see. They only decide who I should see that's following me. Like if they think I guess they're real people or they might be somebody that I'd want to follow. Other than that, um, they just go into this other pool. <laughs> you know, too, Chef. Another awesome change I'd love to see, and that is a lot of us do these hangouts. Um, whether it's you know a show or just you're trying to help people or you just want to collaborate, it would be so cool in a live hangout if you could do a pre-recorded show. Um, and I, I know that hey, when I, I'm with David on that one. I, uh, I, I talked to Ronnie Vincer about that. Ronnie and I had this conversation about a month ago. And obviously, I understand why they don't do it. It's because, you know, one thing about the live air is that everybody has to click that they acknowledge it's public and everything else. And also, you, you're acknowledging all the copyright rules. But it seems to me that if you were doing a, re, a live hangout, uh, you're already agreeing that you accept those rules. So why can't you do a live hangout, record it, and then just play it at a later date? Because I've had so many people that want to be guests on my show that I can't interview because they can't do my time slot on Friday. And so, uh, and, and Chef, I'm sure you've had the same problem yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Well, David, what? I'm totally there with you because I, I have the same exact problem. So, you know, ours are Monday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard right. Time, which is 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If I could record a show at like 2 in the afternoon my time with a doctor or with, mm -hmm. you know, because I have a lot of professionals, you know, and then people during the day, that, that's the same thing that they're saying. That would be so useful for me. And then, you know, it wouldn't be every time, but it would be a special instance. Absolutely. Well, here's a thought. What if it, what if they made it more like the way a live news show is, where it's a live news show, right, but you still got pre-recorded segments? So you could pre-record a segment and then insert that in at the pr appropriate time. Ooh. I totally uh, lie. You should work nice. for Google. I that would be nice. Now, I tried to do that. And, and then it, you could influence them with your hair. You could have them all uh, grow out their hair. Who wouldn't yeah. love to work at Google? I mean, free gourmet food and death benefits for 10 years. Did you hear about that? They got solar, too. They got the good solar panels up on there. Well, you know, Eli could do the help. His, uh, he could do a help hangout, and it could be uh, the what would Jesus do. Awesome. Uh, oh, there you go. You know, Eli, I'm, I'm still just, waiting for I'm you just, to show me your Burks. I'm, I'm just saying, waiting. man. <laughs> I just have long hair, you know. I'm, this is my hippie, it. but. I love it. Those were the days, my friend, when I had hair. And my natural uh. beard. <laughs> I'm not even going to touch that one. <laughs> we're, not, we're not going there. All right, let me put up a, uh, a thing from uh, Shannon, and I just want to acknowledge it. Bah! I think the next time Jeff Denon needs to wear a loincloth and a feather with a bonnet and sing the, any Ted Nugent song, maybe we give him a bow, bow and arrow and make it complete. You know, that's my wife doesn't even want to see me in a loincloth, uh, Shannon. So we're gonna, uh, no, I, I, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> But thank you for the thought. And um, you your boss is in the house here again still. Yep, block and report, no questions. Let's make it easier than trying to figure out their intention. Eli, yes, I love to dog shame people when needed. Ouch. Oh, I'm happy, Mia. Awesome. <laughs> yep, that's what you want to do. Not a problem. Oh. We're, so we're having fun here. Interesting. Okay, here's one. Michael uh, Mason, interesting point regarding pre-recording shows. Have discussed this with my presenter for our show that rolls in the new year. So I think that might be a good way to. Good, good idea. You know, I have often pointed out, like people have asked me about it, and what I've told them when they're doing something or if they're doing – to think about doing segments. All right, mm -hmm. so maybe you can't get the guest on your show, but there's nothing wrong with doing a quick like Mia's doing her 15-minute with Christine kind of right. thing, doing something like that in a 5- to 15-minute format, mm -hmm. pre-recorded. <laughs> I mean, you could even do a bunch of them on one day if you could do it with people and then just push them out whenever you make them private after they're recorded and then push them out when you want. So it could be like a little uh, newsflash kind of event even or something. I think that might work and might be a good way to use a teaser for your uh, for your show. You can still put them in events too. That's true. I love okay. the thought of being able to plan what you're going to say and it can have a big impact if you can edit kind of what you want to do, do a segment. I love the thought of recording on Google. That would be yeah. yeah, I'd love to start seeing more segments done like that. I think it would really kick the game up a notch and uh, get more people noticing what we're doing. A good idea. Okay. All right. We're, uh, we still got some time left, though. Let's see. Has anybody else got anything interesting they want to discuss for the new year uh, plans? We talked to uh, uh, Kelly. Oh, we didn't give Eli a chance to Eli, talk, did you Dennis. finish? We cut him off completely. I, I'm, I want to give him the floor again, just so go. that we let him complete his, his sentence. Sorry, Eli. Oh, careful about giving me the floor. I might not give it back. <laughs> <laughs> We're giving you the fall wood floor, so go ahead. <laughs> um, well, I really... Uh, I, 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 I want to see it for the coming year a lot better discovery on Google+. Plus. I'm hoping Google can do more of that at their end because if people were trying to find a show like this, you know, we're just fresh to Google+, Plus, they probably would never find it. Uh, but I like to, to try to do that myself as well. You know, it's become more of a goal to me to expose people to more of the great things they can do on this platform. Because sometimes I feel like I'm talking about how great it is, but then I forget to tell them what the great things are they can do, and I don't think I'm the only one who does that, actually. Nope, you're right. I think that's a good point. Yep, we need to, to show you. more of what we do. Excellent. Kelly. Yeah, oh. 
Hey, what would you like to see? That's okay. You're vegging there. No problem. <laughs> what would you well, like to see? I have been – I think the shelf life – if you can put something on Google Plus, the shelf life of it is much longer. Where I think, you know, with Facebook, I've kind of missed the boat there. My interest isn't there. And even if I do post something, it kind of gets lost in the mix of things. And same with Instagram. But if I can take any of those and get it onto Google Plus, the shelf life is just a lot longer and my influence here is a little bit stronger. So I'm going to continue to do that. And um, through video, too. I was saying I like to record videos. But um, even Instagram videos, I started recording those. Well, I, I do it on my computer, and I put it out through Instagram. And I, I think they say that the life of anything on Instagram is about three hours long. That's the stream. But then I can take it and upload it to YouTube. And then I can take it from YouTube and put it on Google+. And it just expands the, the shelf life of so many different things in other areas of social media. And then I could even take that that video from Instagram, make a little collage of it, and you can put that on Google Plus again, or you can send that over to Pinterest. But for me, Google Plus is kind of the hub of everything, and I'm going to continue doing that in the new year. It's kind of like the, it just, it's the end of a post. I write a post, you, you check all your SEO, you check your keywords, you make sure you've got everything in order, and then Google Plus is just that very last key. So it just expands everything that I do. Well, especially for bloggers, too, because it's your copyright pretty much now because it's getting time stamped. So if people do take your stuff and repost it, you know, it's, it's easy for you to them to see that you did it first. So well, uh, make it. This is a, that is a whole different thing. Yeah. If we're going to talk blogger goals, I, if anybody can relate to me as a blogger out there watching, any mom or anybody that does anything like I do, trademarking. And um, anything copywriting is, I'll be working on that this year too. Because yes, it's one thing when someone steals your post, but when they start ripping off other things, it's creepy. It's really, it's a creepy feeling. So I know I've seen people take uh, pictures of other people's children and put them on as theirs. That's creepy. That's that's just yeah. That happened to my girlfriend four years ago. She was on CNN because of that. They had um her picture, and it was found in Romania, of all places, on the side of a market. And a friend of hers just so happened to be walking down the street and saw his friend from college with her whole family, took a picture and sent it to her and said, uh, this is you, right? I mean, Twitter Twitter exploded, and that was wow. like four or five years ago, and she wow. was on CNN. And luckily she's a reporter, so she was an ex-reporter, so she, she was fine on TV explaining everything. But it's no joke. It's it's for real. That's kind of scary. Yep, yep. We need to need to have more things put in place to keep that from happening. So I think as Google moves forward, they will be looking at more ways to keep us safe and to get the spammers out. I mean, just some of the changes they've made with mock with the hummingbird I said mockingbird. Oh God. With hummingbird. <laughs> no, we don't want to do that. Sorry, Google. With hummingbird have uh, have uh, eliminated uh, a good portion of it too. Here's another comment from Shannon. You could also turn HOAs into an audio format for those who communicate with us in the podcast. And that's an excellent idea. Thank you, Shannon. And from Mia Voss Ooh, I love the segment ideas, and yes, uh, Biting Edge, one of my favorites, Scott Salcroft has used pre-recorded, which is also helps out when you want to add in sponsor info, links, etc. That way you don't have to upload new video and lose uh, your viewers. Excellent. Lost one word there. So, thank you, Mia. Yep, so there's some changes, and Leah, now in 2014, I know you're new to Google+, Plus, really, but what would you like to see? I always got lots of ideas, Dennis. Um, one of the things that I was looking at right away um, was I was doing all these uh, plans for for bloggers for next year and or for, for brands for next year for my clients. And I was trying to figure out a way to implement Google Hangouts. And I had to stop myself and say, wait, there's probably a lot of rules that I need to understand about you know, how that's going to work. But one of the things that I wanted to do with my network was to pay bloggers and pay influencers to host shows on topics, but not have the topic be about the brand, have it be about a theme, something that people could come together, something issue driven. But I don't know what the rules are about that with Google. you know, And, and I want to be able to do it. I'd like to be able to do it a lot next year. The other thing 
the other goal I want is for myself to get over here and get fully integrated and understand everything and really understand the culture because I think understanding the culture is the most important part. And then second, bringing my community over here little by little. And I, I know that if I make the jump and I make it, I, you know, and explain it to them, then it's going to be easier for them to come over here. Leo, Absolutely, Leo. I, I just want to make sure I understand what what is your what is your show on? What is the main topic that you guys talk about? So we do. It's called Momovation, and Momovation is a disease prevention campaign for moms. So the idea, kind of behind it, is five or eight years ago, I was a hundred pounds heavier than I am today. Okay, and then wow. after I had children, I just said to myself, you know, I don't want my kids to be overweight. So the only way to do that is to make sure I'm not overweight and that I'm role modeling behavior for them. So that's where it started. Um, that's how I started eight years ago. And I lost all that weight and I wanted to give back and I, I was tired of, you know, I was staying at home and I got Board because you know I'm a professional PR person you know by nature and um, I stayed at home to have kids and so I started up a community well it was just the right time right place right time right issue right everything you know and it just blew up and so it's and then two years later I created Momovation and Momovation is very similar to The Biggest Loser we kind of structured it on The Biggest Loser but it's just for moms and it's all home driven so it's like they get their own trainer they have their own dietitian and now we don't just do weight loss we do detox so we detox um, from chemicals. So it's like anything about your food and personal care products and all those toxins that are in your everyday life. We help moms take that out of their home and we teach them how to do that in a seven week boot camp. And so it's not for everybody. We only take two to three moms at a time, but everybody watches. And that's how the show started is people were watching these moms and watching their challenges and how they overcame these challenges. And I would interview them weekly. Well, from there it went to, we would have a guest on that has to do with health issue topics. So I've been doing that show for four and a half, almost five years now. And we used to be on Stick'em. And the last year, um, you know, when Stick'em died a, a, a sad death, we came over here to Google+. And so I've been over here for about a year, but I haven't dived into the community and done nothing else but the Google Hangouts. And right now my traffic was coming from my community, but I've never even, you know, I didn't even bother until maybe the past <clears throat> three, four months trying to get to know people on Google because to me it was just Google Hangouts, you know, but now it's like, wow, there's this really awesome thriving community. And um, so, so when it talks to monetization, because I know that's what you're interested in, um, we also work with brands a lot. So the Momovation campaign does a lot of marketing campaigns um, uh, directed at moms. So that's our target audience is moms. And it's mostly utilizing bloggers. So we, we put like health weight loss campaigns together for brands. We do all kinds of food types of um, you know, uh, blogger activations. We put all kinds of stuff together and we do a lot of Twitter parties, Facebook parties, and I'm trying to think about how to bring in Google because to me, social media has to have multi-platforms to exist. You know, you can't put all your eggs in one basket, but I think that Google Plus is going to be a very, 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 um, I think it's going to be a great place to be and I'm trying to figure out how to fit it in so that moms aren't coming over here. So what just recently happened was about uh, about a year ago a lot of mom bloggers came over here and they kind of left and they went back to Facebook. They just, I don't know what happened, they just kind of either didn't connect or didn't figure it out or got frustrated or didn't work quite the way Twitter or Facebook did. I don't know if they were creative enough to figure out how to make it their own and when it comes to me, I like to make things my own and kind of like figure out a new way to make things work, you know. And so that's one of the things where I'm trying to bring in my clients and stuff and implement Google Plus. And I thought, well, the Hangouts are great because this is a product that you can take with you. You know, it's like you can record a Google Hangout, make it really cool, and then it's a recorded show that they get to keep and they get to promote. But I don't know what the rules are behind that. Are there any specific rules about that, Dennis, that I should know about? Not that I know of, nothing specific about how you would use them and how you use them to promote because I've promoted businesses on here before in Hangouts, uh, so I, I don't think so. You know, There's just the copyright rules that you have to be aware of and those are the, the only real strict ones that they follow. So uh, other than that, and there's some other things I can help you with too. There's some, I mean YouTube has changed too and Google is changing YouTube even more. So there are some amazing things you can do with private Hangouts via YouTube where you could use them as teaching tools and you can monetize them that way as well. Ooh. Yep. So uh, yeah, the person you need to you need to connect with if you are not following Ronnie Bincer, 
Ooh, yeah, I gotta yes. follow him. Gotta follow Ronnie. Ronnie He's Bearsford the man, huh? Is the man. He is the hangout helper. And he also has a hangout mastery community where he does it is a fee to join the community, but you are on top of everything. You know everything is happening, and you know how to run everything, and he, he is just incredible. He's, he's such a good person, too. Oh, excellent. Thank you. No problem. Well, we're running close to the end of the show. Time has flown by. It's been such a fun show today. I'm, I'm having a great time. So I'm going to go around once more with my guests and see if you have any closing remarks. Uh, David, anything to say? Schiff, I just want to say it's been awesome to be on your show. Um, I'm so happy. And, and and if we ever do the pre-recorded thing, I'm definitely going to have you on my show. That would be great. Um, in closing, uh, I host the Online Money Show at OnlineMoneyShow.com. Uh, unfortunately, it's at the same time as Chef's show, but uh, it's okay if you watch Chef's show first and then watch my show recorded. I'm fine with that. Um, anyway, uh, I just hope everybody has an awesome uh, New Year's Eve and an awesome 2014. Great. Thank you. And I'm very happy that you took a week off from your show. She could be on this one live, too. It was very nice. We finally got to connect her. You're welcome. Eli, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much for coming. Any parting words for the cat uh, lovers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the cat lovers know how I feel about them. But uh, I just want to say that you know, 2014 is, is the year that all businesses need to, if they haven't already, adopt a comprehensive social media strategy with Google Plus as a huge part of it. Uh, because it, you, know, we can't, you can't, like, uh, uh, was it uh, Leah who said you can't put all your eggs in one basket? or? That's me. That's Leah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And for years, we saw the obsession of like us on Facebook, like us on Facebook, like us on Facebook, and we see what it resulted in. It wasn't driving business, and now you got to pay for it. You have a comprehensive strategy and make Google Plus a big part of it. Yep. Doesn't have to mean it's the only part, but it should definitely be a big part. Kelly, any parting words for 2014? Well, it's been such a privilege being here. Thanks, Chef. I would say if anybody wants to build their influence, we have a, a link party. It's called Whimsy Wednesdays, but it happens on Tuesdays. So if you're a blogger, you don't have to be a craft blogger, but if you create posts that you want to have shared on Google+, Plus or promoted on Google+, Plus, we are a very uh, G plus friendly link party. So I love to feature other bloggers, and I can pick out, we get... I think it's getting close to 500 different posts that are linked up every week, but pick out different things and promote it on Google+. And the more that you, the more plus ones you get or the more your name is mentioned, it all helps. So if you're looking to build your presence on Google+, link up with us every Tuesday. You could do it on my blog, smartschoolhouse.com. Great. Thank you. And before we go to Leah, I just want to push this up. I'm Kim. Uh, I believe there's an audience for grandmas too, Leah. Women with what I've learned looking back perspective. G plus is a wide open for forums. Yeah, you, Kim, Kim, you're not the first one who sent that to me, though. We actually have grandmas in our um, community. And you're absolutely right. Um, grandma's in social media right now. And so the savvier grandma is, the more likely she is going to be over here. You're awesome. Very good. And what are your, uh, any parting thoughts for 2014 or anything you'd like to say? Oh, wow. Okay. So 2014, in my opinion, this has nothing to do with social media, but I'm hoping to implement a lot of social media with it. But this is the year of, of food. And so since the food movement is so important to me, I'm hoping that this is the year that we get a state to label GMOs, that we push a lot of our, you know, um, making food better and healthier for everybody. And that's kind of my thing. Um, there are, of course, things that I do professionally. If you guys want to check out momovation.com for any content creator that's interested in working with my network, if you go to momovation.com on the right side, there's a little banner that says sign up for opportunities and you guys are all welcome to do that. I, I would love more people from Google Plus to go. I would just I would just be giddy to see that. So and that and I'm just so looking forward to making new friends here. Good. Good. And if you all of you want to leave links in the uh, the comments section for our readers to to find, that'll be great too for all your interests. And I want to point out one more thing because I think I finally arrived. Where is it? I lost it. I pinned it and I lost it. Here we go. Bob Voss has made a comment. 
Seriously, wow. I approve this show, Chef Dennis Lilly. <laughs> Tripod Bob Love. Hi, David Oldenburg, <laughs> Leah, Kelly, and Eli. And Leah, do you know who Bob is? No. Tripod Bob. No. Tripod Bob. Bob Voss is Mia Voss's cat. <laughs> so, just the fact that he must have tricked her to get off the computer. I don't know right. how he did it, but he got—he must have distracted her and logged on real quick. So I appreciate that, Bob. And you know, we love Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Him. Yeah, you a good kitty, Bob. I'll take some extra allergy medication if we ever do meet. All right, I promise. Mia says hashtag Year of the Kickass. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> there we go. Definitely Year of the Kickass. <laughs> right Gotta love it. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for being on today. This has been more fun than I should be allowed to have. I, I hope it's not a regulation <laughs> you, in Florida. <laughs> you guys have been great. And uh, everyone, have a very happy, healthy New Year. I wish you the best, and I wish us all a very prosperous New Year on Google Plus, too, as well. So thanks for coming, and I'll see you all real soon. Have a thank good you, day. Bye, everybody. Later.